hello everyone welcome back to my channel this is natalie with natalie's closet and i'll be right back with s twisted versus z twisted and the announcement of last week's subscriber of the week i'll see you in a sec Okay, so welcome back everyone. As I said, this is Natalie with Natalie's Closet, and today I'm going to go ahead and talk about uh, the difference between S-Twisted and Z-Twisted yarns. And then at the end, I'll go ahead and announce last week's subscriber of the week. So the, the reason why I was bringing this up is because there are so many times that I hear people say, "Ugh, I'm so frustrated, my yarn is splitting. Ugh, my yarn is splitting, my yarn is splitting, my yarn is splitting. And there's a lot of frustration when that happens, and there are questions on is there a way to stop it, why does it happen, etc., etc. Now, I know one of the yarns for me that I honestly don't use often at all, if ever, anymore is, I think it's the sugar and cream because it does split a lot, and that's, that's my own personal thing. But I also have other yarns that also split, but I don't think they split as much uh, that I use that I've gotten from Hobium. And right the second I can't remember which one it is, but um, it is a very frustrating thing to have yarns that split. Now, most yarns that we use on a daily basis are S-twisted yarns. Some are Z-twisted, but for the most part, they're S-twisted. S-twisted yarns are the yarns that will split. Okay, now a lot of people ask, but why does the yarn split? Well, let's talk about the science behind that, which will allow us to understand why yarn is different so that we can make a more informed decision about what yarn we want to work with. Uh, there, is science, uh, there is science behind it, and like I said, I have extensive notes. Oh, I may not have said it, <laughs> but I have extensive notes, so I apologize for reading some of it, but I want to make sure I get it right and not just wing it uh, because that's not good either so anyway yarn is made up of plied strands now there are they're not it's not actually called single ply if there's not multiple plies it's just called singles is what it's called and that's when there is no twist there aren't multiple strands spun together now yarn is made up of plied strands okay so before they're made into plied yarn so you've got the plied strands that are spun before they're actually spun into a yarn that you're going to use that may be multi-plied, okay? So the plied strands, the individual strands, before they're actually made into a, a multi-ply yarn, the yarn strands are spun counterclockwise, like a Z, okay? So they're spun counterclockwise. For me, counterclockwise is this way. I'm not sure, I'm guessing it's reversed for you guys, but to prevent curling though, the plied strands, so the, the individual strands that have been counterclockwise spun, in order to um, prevent the curling, when they're plied together or spun together to make the, the let's say two or three ply yarn, they're spun in a clockwise position, okay, which makes it the S-twisted yarn. Now, if you would spin the plied strands clockwise and then combine the plied strands counterclockwise, you'd have a Z-spun yarn, okay? So the yarn that we use, typically use, yeah, so this Lolo Did It yarn that I have, I'm pretty sure this is a two-ply. Okay, it doesn't say on here, but I'm pretty sure it's a two-ply. It is an S-spun yarn, okay? So the two strands that made this two-ply yarn, they were spun counterclockwise individually. Then when they were spun together to make this two-ply yarn, they were spun clockwise, which made it an S twisted yarn. In order for it to be a Z twisted, when they're individual strands, they would need to be spun clockwise. And then when they're spun together to make a two ply yarn, they would be spun counterclockwise. That would give it the S twist. 
Now this is an example. This is what an S twist looks like when you're looking at it. And this is what a Z twist looks like when you're looking at it. All right. So now you may be asking how the S versus the Z twist affects crocheting. I don't know. You may not be asking that question. I know I was asking the question, but when you crochet with the S twisted yarn and crochet by yarning over, which is what we typically do. We, and, and if you watch a bunch of different tutorials, it's yarn over, yarn over, like a double crochet, you know, push uh, yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. You're yarning over for the most part. Uh, you yarn over and then you turn your hook counterclockwise. Okay. So when you yarn over, you're turning your hook counterclockwise, but the S twisted yarn has was spun clockwise. Okay. So because you crochet in one direction and the yarn is going in the other direction is what causes it to split. Do you see what I'm saying? So when you go and you yarn over, you're going counterclockwise and the yarn was spun clockwise. So it's going in the opposite direction. So when you're actually doing it and you're working through it, it splits because you're working in the opposite direction. So it kind of like almost loosens. Does that make sense? I mean, if you actually watch when you are crocheting with a applied yarn that splits, you can see when it is that it splits the most. So that's what happens when you're crocheting. When you go to yarn over, you're twisting, typically twisting. And, and I should preface this by saying this is for right-handed crocheters, okay? So when you are yarn yarning over, you're, going count, you're twisting counterclockwise against the clockwise twist of the yarn, which is what causes it to split. I should have brought some water because my mouth, I'm, I'm very like cat and mouth right now. <laughs> Okay, but now Z twisted yarn is spun counterclockwise, which is the same direction as when you crochet and yarn over. So when you're yarning over, you're count you're twisted, you're turning counterclockwise, which is in the same direction the Z twisted yarn is. So that's the reason why it doesn't it doesn't um split. So I found that pretty interesting. So that I mean the Z, that's why the Z twisted yarn, and I've heard of the term Z twisted and S twisted, but I never really knew what that meant. I was like, okay, whatever. I mean, do I really need to know this kind of information? But yet at the same time, I get frustrated when yarn is splitting. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to look into this a little bit more and find out, you know, why is there actually a science behind this? Which I mean, typically most things have a science behind them. And is there a way for me to be able to prevent my frustration? Now, I'm not saying all twisted yarns, all multiplied twisted yarns split. They don't as a general rule, but there are some that do more than others. And there's the potential for them unless they're twisted really tightly. And, and you know, really like, honestly, I, I don't foresee, I can see that this yarn could, um, un, you know, could split I'm trying to see. you're not going to be able to see it but I can see that there is potential for this yarn this two ply yarn to split I can see like space in between the strands the way they're twisted so there's always a potential for s twisted yarns to split and you know you have to make the decision do I want to just deal with the frustration of the ones that really bug me like I like Karen Simply Soft because it is a very soft yarn and you all know I'm obsessed with soft yarn, but I do find that it does split. I'm 99% sure it's Karen Simply. <laughs> I know it is. It, and, and that is one of the things that always frustrated me was that it does split. Now, okay, so that's kind of why I have steer because I have noticed for the most part, a lot of the indie yarns that I use, the the superwash merino wools and and the um, mixed with, you know with whatever silk cashmere nylon whatever the case is, I have noticed there is, I'm less frustrated with the splitting. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. It does, but I find that I am less frustrated. It's not as obvious to me in those yarns. So I think that's one of the reasons why I ended up falling in love with them that much more outside of the fact that 
uh, it's supporting small businesses, the colors, the, the, the texture, the softness, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, it can be frustrating. So anyway, how does this affect lefties? It really doesn't for lefties. Everything I've talked about is for right-handed crocheters. So for lefties, it's actually reversed. Lefties have an easier time with S-twisted versus, and they would have a harder time with Z-twisted because everything is reversed for a left-handed person, right? So a left-handed person wouldn't have the issue with the S-twisted yarns as much as a right-handed person would. So it's, you know, my next question was, what can I do to prevent splitting? If as a right-handed crocheter, I want to use S-twisted yarns, you know, because honestly, I've not really paid attention to how, how many yarns there are that are out there that are Z-twisted. I know the Lion brand ZZ Twist is a Z-twisted yarn. And I do, I have to say, I do love that one. I did pick up, I think like one or two um, skeins of it one time. And I really did enjoy working with it. But the thing is, is it's an, I, I didn't know then what I know now as to why I probably enjoyed working with it as much. I mean, it was nice also because it, it, it does have a nice texture to it, but I'm now realizing that that was likely the reason it didn't split. I didn't have a problem with it. You know, just like chain spun yarns with chain spun yarns, you're not going to have a problem with it twist uh, splitting because of the way it's spun. Now I haven't done the research into um, the chain spun and other spun yarns. This is just specifically for the two primary types of yarns out. Well, actually the S twisted is the primary yarn that's out there, but that's all I've really looked into right now. But if you ever want to know, if you ever want to, if you ever want to use a yarn that you know is Z twisted, try the Lion brand ZZ twist. That one would then get you, you'd be able to work with it and actually tell the difference between working with an S twisted and a Z twisted if you're right handed. All right. So the other way, if you're wanting to use an S twisted yarn, but are trying to avoid the splitting, you can try to yarn under instead of yarn over. Now that I don't know. I, I know I yarn over. Would having to learn to crochet yarn under be like an entirely, like you would have to retrain your brain in order to yarn under. Is that difficult? I guess it just depends on how you learn and how you, how easily you pick new things up. But that is another option. If you're wanting to still use S twisted yarns, to avoid splitting is you can learn to yarn under instead of yarn over um, because that changes the direction of how you crochet. But the only downside to yarning under is it can create tighter stitches and over time it can start to um, affect your arm and your wrist and, ache, and have it ache more. Now, is that just something when you're first learning it and you're not used to it so it's a new movement that and and if you work it over time like you're re, like you're retraining your arm basically would that work out work itself out i don't know i i can't say that part i didn't see anything about that but those were that was something that was said if you do want to try to start yarning under so that you can use the s twisted without having to deal with the splitting that it can cause a tighter stitch and it could um, make your arm and wrist ache a little bit more. And again, I think it's because you would be retraining your arm, your arm to be doing an opposite motion. So with as much, well, I wish I had more time to crochet because I would love to be able to do that more. But for many people who crochet for hours and hours and hours on end every day to retrain, Miley, Miley, no, Miley. I'm hoping this isn't going to be a crazy barking fest because sometimes she could go nuts for like a long time. So hopefully, hopefully she's going to be quiet. Okay. 
So anyway, I don't know if this is something that you guys were ever even interested in or even ever wondered or thought of or even heard of S-Twist and Z-Twist yarns. I don't know. But I just found it interesting because I have heard, especially recently for some reason, a lot of people talking about how they're frustrated with their yarn splitting. And I figured, you know what, I'm going to look into the different plies of yarn. And then as I was doing that, I saw a couple of references to Z-Twist and, and or S-Twist and Z-Twist. And I was like, you know what, let me look into this because this is specifically talking about the issue people are having with splitting yarn. So I, I thought, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and share that with you guys and maybe it'll be something that's interesting to you and maybe it won't. I mean, who knows? Maybe not one person is going to watch this video. But if it helps in any way, that's what, you know, that's what my goal is, is to help in any way I can. And I like to try to get information and you all have consistently said you love learning. So, and I do too. So hopefully you got something out of this. If you have any questions, again, leave it in the comment section below. And I will, if I don't know the answer, which could be a good chance when it comes to this, I will look it up and I'll comment in the, I'll reply to your comment and also address it in getting to know you so that anybody else that may have possibly had the same question or concern or miss or not understanding will be able to get clarity on it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, um, this, uh, video. And now for last week's subscriber of the week, which I know I just announced the week before subscriber of the week on Friday, but we're back on track. <laughs> We're back on track. So last week's subscriber of the week is... Congratulations, Dottie. I am so excited. Please email me at natalies.closet at yahoo.com and send me your mailing address so I could go ahead and get you... get Go ahead and send you your card. And I... Congratulations. I'm so excited for you. And I just love that I'm able to, you know, choose at least, you know, choose one person every week to be able to send a special thank you to because you, I appreciate you all so very much. I would not be here if it wasn't for you. And I so, so greatly appreciate all of your support. You guys are amazing. Your comments are amazing. The emails that I get amazing. I mean, this community is just incredible. I mean, with all the support that we have out there and everybody really truly cares about the other person and that I think is wonderful. And in this day and age, with all the craziness, craziness that's going on in the world, we really can use positivity and people that lift each other up and that's what this community is. And I so, so very much appreciate every single one of you. And at least this is a way for me to be able to say thank you to at least one person every week. So. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comment section below if there's anything else you have been interested in finding out or if there's something that frustrates you and you'd like to know if there's a backstory to it or if there's a reason for it or if there's you know a way around it or whatever. Let me know in the comment section below. I will go do the research. I have no problem doing that and it's something I'll enjoy and it'll be something that I'll always have to share with you guys on Mondays. So let me know. It, no question is too stupid. Absolutely no question is too stupid or too like, what? Really? No, absolutely not. Because I can guarantee you, you're not the only person out there that has wondered th that same thing. And sometimes it's just a matter of you just, you're so busy, you just don't even think about asking somebody about it. Well, listen, I want to know because I probably have the same question or if I haven't dealt with it, would wonder the same thing when I did deal with it. So please let me know in the comment section below if there's anything you want me to cover or go over or find out or research or whatever the case may be, let me know in the comment section below and I will go ahead and get that information for you. So thank you again, everyone, so very much. I greatly appreciate you. I greatly, yeah, I greatly appreciate you guys. Excuse me. Um, I will see you tomorrow night. Tuesday at 9 30 p.m. Eastern on my live and otherwise I'll have a video up on Wednesday. So have a great night. Have a great 
week, but I'll see you before the end of the week. And uh, congratulations again, Dottie. I'm so excited. Make sure you email me with your address so I can go ahead and get your card out. And uh, Miley says hi to her peeps, and she will see you tomorrow. I have to make sure I have a B-O-N-E or a decent T-R-E-A-T-S for her so that it'll occupy her tomorrow night. I got to make sure I got one. All right. We love you dearly. Love, hugs, and prayers to everybody. Remember, for every season, there's reason to crochet. And extra prayers for anybody who may need it. My mom also says hello. And, um, oh, yeah, and we did uh, post a uh, new recipe on our kitchen channel today. So make sure you go over there and check it out. The link is in the description box below, but it's Natalie and Mom's, Natalie, the word and Mom's apostrophe S kitchen. But the link is in the description box below. And check it out. It's an easy, quick um, energy ball recipe. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day. Love, hugs, and prayers again, and extra prayers for those that need it. Bye, everyone. Love you.